all right so the third um video on the sociological theories so this last video i'll be talking about the conflict theory by karl marx okay so in the previous videos i already explained the opinion of uh, max weber and then emil Durkheim. all right so let's look at karl marx theory which is called the conflict theory so karl marx was not a religious man and then um karl marx was not a religious man and then he never even did a detailed study on the subject so you know remember i mentioned that and you talk him did this small scale study while max Weber did a study on on religious with large followership and all excuse me all right so Karma did not really do a detailed study. Most of the, um, from my research, he actually kind of work on someone's work, uh, Ludwig Fubert. But I don't want to add that to this because the essence of this video is to make the theory simple for you to simplify it, right? All right, so let's get back into it. So Karma was not a religious man. And he never even did a detailed study on the subject. Still, he has quite an influence whenever the topic of sociological theories of religion is discussed. Yes, so Marx has a, a, a large influence when you're talking about sociological theories of religion. There's a popular saying that uh, religion is the opium of the masses. Religion is the opium of the masses. That statement was made by Karl Marx, right? So Marx called religion the opium of people or the masses either way. He stated that religion teaches people to accept their life as it is, no matter how bad and postpone the reward to happiness for an outer life. So let me tell you what it means. When you hear the word opium, opium is related to um, uh, the, the class of weed you know in the iron panel and you know how what it does it intoxicates you it kind of um uh it influences your behavior i mean someone that is high on opium or weed or something you know that it affects their behavior right so what he's saying is that religion is the opium of the, of the people religion kind of you know make people behave in a certain way in the sense that okay let me put it this way so imagine when um um things are not going well the way when the region tends to make you feel like oh it's just for now you get uh there is reward after this life i know that most times that's what most people believe in that oh in heaven there is this is it that you're going to get and all that so he stated that religion teaches people to accept their life as it is. So another another explanation I want to give to that opium of mass system is that I believe some people take weed and all those um, drugs to calm them down, right? Like they believe when they take it, they are calm. So I think another thing that Max is trying to say is that religion kind of make people feel relaxed, you know, that even when things are not going in their way they kind of they are still relaxed like yeah, it's just for now there's happiness after after they are dead you get what i'm trying to say so that's what basically what mass was trying to say that is let me read again stated that religion teaches people to accept their life as it is no matter how bad and postpone the rewards or happiness for an afterlife as a result religion forbids social change so you can see the difference between uh Marx theory and Weber's theory. So Weber says religion influences social change. Marx is saying that it forbids social change. That means religion, according to Karl Marx, religion forbids you from changing your pattern of behavior. It teaches no resistance to oppression. Religion teaches no no resistance to oppression and diverts the attention of people from the injustices happening in the world. You can see people want to 
things are not going on where people want to go out and demonstrate you know and you know riot and all but religion make you feel like oh just stay calm do you get don't react and all so that's basically what Kamas is saying that we don't kind of divert our attention when it is happening telling not to accept our fate telling us not to react exactly what Kamas was saying here similarly it also justifies the inequality of power and wealth that the privileged lot possess so that's another angle where Kamas is coming from that religion also promotes inequality in the society you will see priests having quite a number of money and the church members are paupers they don't have money so he's saying that religion justifies the inequality of power and wealth that the privileged lot possess so while it was a common belief that mark did not hold any regard for religion i mean that's what people say that mass is not does not have regard for religion or this thing is actually not completely true mass was of the view that religion serves as a refuge from the roughness of our daily lives and the oppression by the authorities. So what Marx was trying to say is that, see, the rich are getting richer, right? Poor are getting poorer. And then religion is making us not to retaliate, you know. We are just accepting it that, okay, if I'm not rich in this life, I'll be rich in the next life, right? So Marx is saying, Marx is now saying that religion is kind of a refuge, from the roughness of our daily life so we find succor in religion we religion is our peace so you know when you like for instance when a christian is going through situations and he just tells himself god is with me god will help me somebody cheated you see that god said god said he's, he's going to avenge, avenge for me you know those kind of things so religion is like our refuge you believe that nothing is going to happen to us people says and there is suffering the land you say my god will provide for me you know all those kind of thing even when we don't even have that thing we still feel relaxed that god is there with us so he's saying that religion is like a refuge from the roughness of our daily lives however he also predicted that re- traditional religion will soon fade away yes he said but this thing will might not last long that right? to still fade one day i remember that a midwake also said something like that and that it's not going to last forever so conflict theorists view religion as an institution that helps maintain patterns of social inequality. So comes of the opinion that religion maintain help uh, you know society to maintain the patterns of social inequality. People accept whatever situation they find themselves and they don't fight back, you know. <clears throat> and all. So let's conclude. Please, if you need clarity on anything kindly comment below okay you see if you need me to explain better maybe there's something you did not get my explanation if i confused you in any way please use the comment box so i can you know relate with you all right so let's conclude on the three uh theories we i talked about so to sum it up religion can be said to be a rigid system that consists of moral beliefs and norms so religion is rigid it's not flexible it's not something that you can change and it consists of moral beliefs and norms each religion whether it's judaism whether it's hinduism whether whatsoever it is islam it actually consists of moral beliefs and norms <coughs> it has their beliefs right it has their norms their way of life and it is present in different fronts in different types of society the religions that worship animal the religion that maybe they they, they hold a particular object as sacred so the religion is, is present in different forms in different types of society so when we look at it through the sociological lens that's like yeah we learn that we can comprehend the theories of religion in sociology by via different perspectives so we're saying that we can understand the theories of religion via different perspectives so you remember sociology is study of society right uh-huh. so we learn that we can comprehend the theories of religion in society in, when you're studying society you can understand the theories of religion from different perspectives so looking at it you know uh being a functionalist Dorkham said that religion is like a binding force that governs the moral demeanor of individuals so what 
Durkheim focused more on is the function that religion plays in the society and it's of the opinion that religion binds people together you know it, it binds them together you remember Durkheim talk about the activities the celebrations and all then Miwa Weber believed that sorry for that Weber believed that it's religion massively influences every society and is capable of bringing social change to the society capable of bringing social change to society you can change a pattern of thinking and it also related to the economical decisions we make so in contrast marx observed that religion is a system of stratification the religion as a way of bringing status you see the way we hold bishops in our esteem you that those ones are closer to God, then we have the Levitas and all those stuff. So this association is so 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 apparent. Alright. So it says that religion is a system of education that is responsible for strengthening the society's existing inequality. Alright. So one thought was common among all these three sociological theories of religion. And the, the common thought is that if, if religion will eventually fade away as the world becomes more modern, advanced and capitalist. So that's that about sociological religion. Alright, so thank you so much once again for watching. Please share with your friends if you are preparing for exam. Share with your friends, let them watch. And if you have questions, like I said, please use the comments section. Alright, thank you. Bye.